Hello everybody, I just wanted to do an unboxing of my brand new CZ Scorpion EVO 3 S1 in the pistol configuration. I uh, wanted to show you what you got in the box, uh, or straight out of the box, uh, straight from ZZ, CZ, and uh, to go over a couple of things that I'm going to be upgrading as well. Uh, there is a plethora of uh, aftermarket parts and support uh, for this uh, this pistol. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about the important things that should be upgraded, uh, things that people have, uh, other people have said on YouTube that really make a lot of sense, and uh, you know things you should follow uh, to get your Scorpion uh, running smooth in the way you want it. Uh, so this is the box that it comes in, uh, straight from the manufacturer. Uh, not it's not sealed or or actually I think it is it was sealed, but uh, either way, we're gonna open open her up. you get the uh, top of the box is in here is the owner's manual uh, a warranty card and an interesting thing they actually test fire this particular gun and they give you the target uh, along with um, uh, where it shot and how far it was from 26 meters I believe, or 25 meters and the grouping size and, and whatnot I'll take that out later for you guys to see but like I said, in here is the owner's manual and your warranty card, which the warranty is five years from uh, CZ, which I'm um, kind of a little bit disappointed about that. But, you know, uh, five years is, is pretty good. We'll set that to the side. Uh, this is just some plastic cardboard. And in here is the pistol itself. Now, the model I bought came with two 10-round mags. You know, you got other ones that come with the 20 rounds. They just... Uh, as of uh, the date that I bought this, early December uh, 2020, there were not a lot available and not a lot that were decently priced. Uh, this particular gun I got from Kentucky Gun Club. Uh, it was free shipping. Uh, they didn't charge me tax. I ended up paying a lot less than some other manufacturers or other gun stores that were charging maybe a little bit less for this, but you tack on the shipping and the, and the tax plus the, the FFL transfer fee here in my area, uh, you know, you, you you run up quite a bit more. I got this one for $939, uh, $939 shipped to my FFL. Uh, so, but again, and it only comes with the two 10 round mags, which not a big deal. Uh, I've got, I bought four more mags, you can see down there, uh, all from uh, Prepper Gun Supply. They're all made by uh, Manticore Arms and I'll show them in a minute here. So this is the gun. It comes in the, I believe this is urban gray or wolf gray, but it's a gray color, uh, kind of cement-ish, and it's not so bad. Uh, I've had other guns that I'll show you that are, um, you know, in the flat dark earth uh, motif, and I didn't really want another one, especially a PCC in a flat dark earth, uh, because my primary use for this would be plinking and maybe home defense, so... Uh, I'm not going to take it anywhere outside where it's going to be around, you know, dirt. So uh, it doesn't need to blend in that way. But uh, I thought this was cool. This is my first time having a gun in this particular color. Uh, I've been looking at another Glock 19 with the lower gray and, uh, you know, uh, the regular black uh, slide. But uh, I digress. Um, one of the main things that people complain about that you, everyone should do, and they are right about it, is this. Um, let me get my knife so I can point it out. So this trigger, or excuse me, this safety right here, this is on the, the right-hand side of the gun. This is where your trigger finger would be resting on. Uh, this SOB does dig into your, your, your finger. Uh, another thing I'm going to be upgrading is the, uh, I got a, the uh, delete kit for that one. Another thing I'll be upgrading is this trigger. The trigger spring is a heavy spring for about a $1,000 gun. Uh, it's got a crappy trigger, honestly. Uh, I mean, my mil spec AR triggers are much better than this. Uh, at least this has, I believe, a, a, a steel hammer or, you know, a, a metal hammer, a metal sear, unlike some other uh, polymer guns that have a plastic sear. Uh, even then, this is a, a slightly heavy, spongy, some uptake, uh, vague break. I don't like the trigger, and I knew that coming in. So, uh, But a lot of people have just changed the uh, trigger spring, and that knocks it down from like an eight, nine pound trigger to five and a half, they say. 
Uh, but out of the box for a thousand dollar gun, this trigger is crap. Uh, sorry, CZ, it's, it's just a crappy trigger. Uh, I, I'll also be replacing this um, mag release with a Magpul one. Oh, and the grip as well. I've got the Magpul grip. I'm familiar with Magpul. I like the texturing, so I decided to go with that. Uh, like I said, two 10 round mags, uh, your uh, standard you know, gun lock. Uh, the hand guard I'm going to be re replacing too. Uh, some people keep this. I don't mind it so much. I hate this uh, Picatinny rail section on the side is not removable. Uh, even if you put lad you know, rubber ladders here, uh, it's not the best feeling in the world. Uh, I don't know why it's not removable, uh, but you know, whatever. The barrel nut. Now the barrel nut is the thing I was worried about the most. This one gave so many people problems to take off. It was so tight caked on with uh, uh, the yellow Loctite from the factory, um, and luckily I got it off. Some people had to torch this, some people had to put chemicals to to dissolve the Loctite. I wasn't sure my, how mine would be, so I went ahead and bought some of this, uh, this stuff here called Uncure. Uh, there's another brand name on Amazon. Uh, looks, uh, this is called by Install Bay. There's another brand that looks exactly the same, and apparently it, it is the same company. But this is to undo uh, that super glue Loctite type of uh, you know uh, stuff that's on the thread locks, or the, the thread. Fortunately, mine came off pretty easy. Uh, I did have to use uh, uh, this tool. Can it was invaluable from Midwest Industries. Okay, this socket, this barrel nut socket. I'll show you in a second. This was, uh, I mean, the probably the best purchase. Uh, as far as tools goes for this particular gun, uh, gun. The sucky thing, you only maybe have to use it once or twice in your life. Uh, but it's about 20 something dollars. Uh, HB industry makes, makes one as well, but it's, it looks like a giant shim versus this is an actual socket had better grip on it. Uh, you will need a one inch socket for your, for your wrench. Uh, I didn't have a one inch socket. My biggest one is a three, three quarters. But I had this adjustable wrench type of tool from uh, from Home Depot. It goes all the way up to one and one sixteenth, and it fit in there perfectly. Long enough, it's heavy. It gave me enough leverage to crank and un un undo the uh, the lock on that. Uh, I like the CZ uh, sights that come with it. I know some of the newer models come with. Uh, excuse me. Some of the newer models come with Magpul flip up sights. I have several Magpul flip up sights on. Uh, my my AR, so I'm very familiar with those. I just I like the look of these. I mean, they look European, and that's one of the reason main reasons I got this gun. It looks it doesn't look like an AR. Uh, I've got several ARs. I didn't want an AR9, um, but I like the look of the European gun. Looks like the Streebog SP9 uh, looks like a uh, you know UMP HK UMP. Uh, I considered a poor man's B and T uh, APC9. Uh, it, for the Streebog versus the B and T, uh, the B and T is about twice, <laughs> twice the, the the price of the Streebog. So, and this particular gun with the accessories and the things that I got were just about the same price as the Streebog. So, but like again, going back to the reliability part of it and the aftermarket support, uh, this particular item, the particular gun. Uh, the other thing that came with the. Uh, the CZ here is this nice CC bag. And here, in here is a cleaning kit. It's got a brush, if I'm not mistaken, a brush, a, um, a cable, a cleaning cable, some oil, uh, something else. But it's a cleaning kit in here. It's built. Close enough. So it's got a brush. It's got one of these things, a, a jag, I think it's called. Uh, the wrench for, I don't know what, but I think for the sights. There's a brush. Uh, what is this green thing? Oh, that's just it. The tag on the uh, no, the box is a cable, some cleaning patches, and some kind of oil. I haven't looked at that yet, but I'm going to be using my own oil. Uh, there is this sight pusher tool or sight adjustment tool, and it's actually labeled as far as uh, what direction and stuff. And if you need to do elevation, uh, but that's what comes in this little uh, bag. It's nice. I'm probably not going to touch anything in here. Uh, simply because other than the sight adjustment tool, maybe uh, this is sighted at the factory at 25 yards. And like I said, they keep, uh, they give you in the, in the box, in the bag, 
uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, the actual report. And it's not the actual um, target that they shot at. It was like a computer printed uh, target with uh, the areas that they hit versus a point of aim and, and those kind of things. Also in here is, I think this is a thread protector. If you decide to take this compensator off or flash hider compensator, uh, you know, this muzzle device off here, it, it comes off very easily. The stinking barrel nut is, the stinking barrel nut is everybody's, uh, the bane of everybody's existence. But luckily mine came off relatively easy. It was tight, but uh, I didn't have to crank, hammer, heat, or put any chemicals to break that, uh, break that free. Uh, there is a warning label. Uh, we'll read it here. Attaching a stock to this firearm constitutes uh, the making of an NFA firearm and re requires compliance with all applicable local, state, and federal laws. Meaning if you were to put a regular rifle stock on here, uh, this would become an SBR. However, I have an SB tactical brace. This is a brace for a pistol. So that will be what we're going to be installing here as well. Uh, like I said, I wanted to show you guys the uh, target that came with the gun uh, when it was uh, from the factory. Now, this is not the actual target that they shot. There is no holes in this paper. This was just a computer printout that came with uh, the gun it, with the warranty and all that and what it does and it shows you uh, you know where they shot point of impact uh, so this uh, sheet of paper says the name of a CZ uh, I can't pronounce that so I'm glad they call it CZ but it is the hit pattern data chart and uh, I'm assuming this comes with every uh, Evo carbine pistol whatever it tells you the name of the, uh, the actual firearm serial number uh, caliber, the brand of ammo they used. Uh, they shot at a distance of 25 uh, meters, roughly a little bit over 25 yards. A number of shots, uh, some uh, variations in the hit pattern and all this math mumbo jumbo. The, the operator, uh, the shooter's personal number, I guess the operator, the employee, uh, the date they shot it was uh, September 30th, 2020. And this was at seven in the morning. So here you can see the key, the, the point of aim is the cross. And the actual impacts are the white circles, and the mean point of impact uh, is the dark circle. So here it is right here. Uh, this was a point of aim at 25 meters, 25 yards, and this is the grouping of three that they got. So it shoots a little bit to the left, and some of the shots a little bit high. Again, I don't know which shot was first, but you can kind of see it. The point of aim is a little bit, uh, point of impact is a little bit off from the point of aim. But at 25 yards, uh, this is not bad at all. Uh, for a PCC. Uh, so again, this comes with the uh, uh, with the pistol in the the, the box. Uh, I made a copy of this. The original is folded, but uh, this is a copy. But this is it. There's no bullet holes or any or anything like that. Uh, but it's just cool to see instead of just a shell casing and then it's shot by you know employee X Y Z. You actually get you know an actual shot placement. So it's pretty cool. So here is the finished product. Uh, for now, anyway, I'm still messing around with it. I still have things I need to do or to shoot it and f see how it feels. Uh, we'll start at the muzzle here and go work our way backwards. Uh, again, same uh, factory compensator. Uh, I may replace this. We'll see. I, I do like the look of this, and apparently it's a pretty good compensator flash hider. So we'll see. Uh, the barrel nut again, I, I already took mine off. You have to take this barrel nut off in order to replace this whole handguard. So it's an absolute must that you have uh, the proper tool to take that off. Uh, and I again, lucky I had the Midwest Industries one, took it right off. Uh, this is the Paxi, Paxi Sapper uh, handguard. It has M-lock slots on the bottom and on the side as well. You can see I went with a mix of uh, the Magpul Rail Cover Type 2s and the M Lock Hand Stop Kit. So these are the two things that I used. Uh, it's a kind of a hodgepodge of uh, mixing them together. Uh, this one comes in a uh, three piece. Normally pe people put it under here, but this, since this one already had the forward hand stop, and this is normally the rear hand stop, but I had to play around with it because I wanted my thumb to index somewhere up here. 
and this just wasn't doing it in this position here. So I, I flipped those, and actually this works out much, much better. Uh, let me see if I can show you. So now that when I reach for it, ah, boy, my thumb can actually rest on there, and I can get a little more, more of a forward grip like I would an AR. Uh, you know, not, not the classic C clamp, but uh, a little bit modified. Instead of the C this way, my thumb will move forward that way. And I think it's going to give me a little bit better leverage, especially shooting uh, in a pistol uh, a pistol like this when, with the photo stock and not having it braced against my shoulder uh, unintentionally or anything like that. Or if I, uh, I have this brace folded forward, I can actually shoot it with two hands and use the front, my front hand to actually... Uh, mitigate some recoil and keep it on track. We'll see. Uh, it looks kind of funny because it really kind of pokes out quite a bit. And also I had to move the charging handle to the other side. Uh, and right now it looks a little funny, but like I said, if this works, it works. It doesn't bother me so much, but you can see how, more, how far that comes out to catch uh, my thumb and have a thumb place to index my, rest my thumb. Uh, otherwise, you know, I, I really see myself putting my grip under here. And if I didn't have this here, I'd want to move up and clamp my thumb onto something. And that that something is a little too close to the muzzle. So uh, we'll see how this works out. Again, I had to uh, break some pieces. I'll show you normally how this looks on a regular rail. This is on my 11 and a half inch. So normally, this is how people set it up like that with the small... Uh, the small uh, hand stop in the front and the larger, larger one in the back. So on a rifle uh, or a uh, any other type of uh, device, uh, rifle or, or a pistol, you can rest your hand on the back of that a little bit more and get, get a little bit more leverage. So I, uh, I couldn't do that here because, um, you know, if this was right there, if this was there, it, it just doesn't work with the shape of your hand, and it actually hurts. So this one, actually, because it's rounded here, uh, is actually it gives me a very good grip to uh, help uh, keep the muzzle down. Again, when, once I shoot it, I'll find out if I like it, but for now, it feels very good in the hand. Again, this Paxi Sapper uh, hand guard is good, uh, looks very nice. In the camera here, you can maybe see a little bit of difference of a gray. Um, I mean, it's ever so, so slight. If this was a really bright white light, uh, you can kind of see the difference. But here in the, my, my breakfast uh, table, it's, you can't even really notice. Um, I also have the 30 round uh, uh, smoke uh, magazine from Manticore Arms, PGS, hybrid Manticore Arms uh, uh, magazine. The gray one that I also have, I didn't bring it out. But it's even a different gray than all three of these. So, you know, you have three different shades of gray, but they're, again, they're ever so slight. Uh, the Romeo I, the Romeo 5, I decided to keep the normal AR height mount. The Magpul uh, Enhanced Mag Release uh, was a pretty install. Just a, there's a little, pretty easy install. There's just a little pin you push out. And there's, a, there's one little spring. Uh, and again, HB Industries has some very good videos on how to install a lot of these things. Uh, very detailed, uh, very, uh, they, they go slow enough to where you can kind of see and understand. But even then, you know, I mess with ARs a lot. So this was relatively super easy to, to do um, uh, for just about anybody. Again, it is enhanced because it has a duck bill down here to give it a feel like an AK would, uh, how you would disengage the magazine on an AK or even a Ruger 1022, that flap, duck bill, whatever you want to call it. You can kind of see how that works, push down here. Uh, normally you would, uh, oops, sorry. Normally you would, on your opposite hand, your trigger finger, or if you're left-handed, push right here on the stock one. Okay, and that would disengage the magazine. Uh, as you can see, it popped out. Uh, one thing I noticed that when the bolt is all the way forward and you got an empty magazine or any magazine, uh, if you depress the, the magazine release, it will, it will drop free. Now, the only time it doesn't drop free is if the bolt 
is uh, latched all the way back, like say, let's say like an, on a uh, empty round or empty magazine. And I'll show you here just real quick. So if I were to drop this mag right now or release the mag right now, uh, it's not a drop free mag, see that? Because the bolt is back. Okay, so we're gonna release the bolt. And this is an empty magazine still. And if I release the magazine now, it drops free. So, you know what? Uh, depending on how you reload magazines, uh, in, a, in a situation, some people wait until the last round to reload. Some people have a mental count of how many rounds they've had so that they don't get caught with their pants down when it finally reaches 32. Uh, they may reload in, in, anywhere between 28 and 32 rounds. So they, they know for sure that uh, you know the, whatever they're whenever they're reloading, they're reloading and they're ready to go instead of guessing and waiting for the mag uh, the bolt to hold back, and now you try to uh, fire and you have an empty mag. So uh, again, that's your philosophy of use, but just to be aware, it is a drop free mag when the bolt is forward. When the bolt is back, it stays put. Just a FYI, the mag mag the, the bolt release. Uh, started loosening up quite, quite nicely. It's not too bad, but not too bad right now. And I think it's going to get even easier with time, especially these PGS mags are, that have a metal feed lip. They catch the, the, the mag release uh, a, little, a little bit better and it releases uh, better. Uh, the HB Industries Light Lighten Spring Kit helped a whole bunch. Uh, I mean, the, that was one of the biggest improvements of, uh, with is the other one being the... The two, the two upgrades you should absolutely do is the trigger upgrade, trigger spring upgrade, and a different uh, right hand, right sided safety selector or a safety delete like I have here. <coughs> I deleted the uh, safety selector here, so now it's just an indicator. This is also made by HBI. It's uh, aluminum, I, I would assume, some type of metal, but it's still an indicator here. Uh, there is no way for you to select fire or, or safety. And for me, it, it doesn't matter on this side. I, I don't like, I don't really uh, care to do it AK style. Some of the mag, uh, excuse me, some of the safety selectors are a little bit more forward and you move it up and down just like an AK would. But uh, again, I don't have any AKs anymore. Everything I have is AR style. So uh, I decided to go with this. Uh, mag pull, uh, pistol grip. Uh, much, much improved uh, over the stock. The angle is better. The whole fitment of the uh, the shape of the grip itself, uh, the stippling or the texture here is uh, pretty aggressive, whereas the stock one is really smooth and really cheap feeling. There was like no no texture there at all. Uh, but this one's much better. The only thing I, I, I would have liked for it to see on this grip is maybe a storage panel down there be, be for your little knickknacks. I like to store sometimes a microfiber cloth down there to clean uh, the lenses of my red dots because I generally don't carry the lens covers on them. Um, so all of the other Magpul mags, you know, have a, a compartment, but this uh, particular one doesn't because I, I believe the way they they made them, uh, these screws are not used for these screws here are not used for installation. Only this one. Uh, this is just a, uh, the Magpul mag, uh, excuse me, the Magpul pistol grip is two pieces and they screw those two pieces together to make one piece. When you unscrew this one, all you do is unscrew it and you slide the old one off, slide the new one on, screw that back in. I put a little bit of blue Loctite there because on the other side there is some a metal nut uh, that it can engage on. <coughs> uh, the safety selector, still a little firm. Uh, but I think eventually that's gonna work its way uh, loose. The safety selector, once you take it out and look at it, is actually metal. Uh, the part that it's disengaging and catching on is metal. So that's gonna wear down with time. For right now, it's still firm. Also, the placement of it for my hands, uh, I, it's hard for me to put it on safe but it's relatively easy for me to put on, on fire. So to put on safe, I don't have enough leverage because it's a little bit too far up. If if it was, you know, pushed back, 
a little bit more, I can actually catch it with my thumb knuckle, but uh, for right now, putting it on safety is easy. Uh, just like ARs, uh, you gotta have to work a little bit to put it on safe. Here, I'll show you how the trigger is. Uh, there is a little tiny bit of uptake, some creep, and a little bit more creep, a little gritty, and that's it. And if I can get it, uh, hard to do one-handed here, hold on. All right, so I have to release the mags, all right. Okay, just to show you the, the trigger reset. That's it right there. And there you go. Much improved trigger over, uh, much improved over the, 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 the factory trigger spring. That trigger spring was, was, was pretty heavy. This one, again, at about five and a half pounds, I believe. Five and a half, six and a half pounds. Uh, the SB Tactical uh, brace and adapter. This was a little bit difficult to get off, not because me um, the mechanics was it, uh, mechanics of it was difficult. It was just it slides on metal on plastic, and there's it slides on these grooves. It was hard to get out. So there's in in the back here, underneath this, there's a uh, small spring with a uh, I want to call it a divot or what's the actual f official term for it? Number seventy, the stock retaining button. Number seventy, stock retaining button. So there's a stock retaining button. That you depress, and then you slide this whole uh, excuse me slide this whole uh, part uh, black part here up and out, uh, and that was stiff. So I had to use a punch to punch, hold it and kind of finagle it, and then uh, also use another hand, um, uh, use another hand to use a nylon uh, small nylon hammer to kind of punch and back it out. Took a couple of good whacks. And it eventually backed out. To put it on was just as hard. It's really tight to, to slip on here. But you just kind of use your nylon tap, keep tapping it down until it, it hits that spring. Uh, it'll automatically come out and lock it in place. And then you put a uh, the uh, locking nut here. Uh, it comes with the brace uh, in the box. Uh, I, would, I put a little bit of blue Loctite on there as well. And that one cinches it down to the plastic underneath it. Uh, the SB brace works great so far. Um, this button was the only part I was concerned about because I, I've seen this at the gun show, uh, a heavily used one where it had like, you know, people's fingerprints and some staining because people just handled it. I guess the gray is not that uh, popular of a color, so people handle it and, and they don't buy it. Uh, so the one I saw at the gun show, this part right here was pretty worn. Uh, let me show you what I mean. On this one, of course, it's brand new, so it's not an issue. Uh, this part is what I saw worn out. And you can see it's, it's a triangle. It's a triangle shape. Uh, and I saw it kind of worn down a little bit around here. It kind of started rounding off because this is plastic. This is plastic catching on to, to metal. Uh, so over time, I believe this may wear down, but the one I saw at the gun show, it was worn uh, worn to where uh, this was rounded, but it still caught just fine. So we'll see it over the long run. Uh, you know, hopefully I have a, I'll have a plenty of rounds to this thing by then. Uh, there is a tension set screw right there. Uh, let's see. You can set, kind of see the hinge of the uh, the brace. Oh, lordy. Ah, it's hard to do this one hand. So where the brace pivots, there's a retention screw. You can tighten that down or loosen it to, to your liking. Uh, I like it a little bit firmer uh, just for me. I don't want this thing sliding off, flopping, sliding all over the place, you know, uh, hitting me or maybe catching my hand or skin at the wrong or uh, uh, inopportune time. Also, if I wanted to use this as a uh, truck gun, if that's your sort of thing, uh, you know, I don't want this thing flopping all over, over the place either. So, but even then, I, I tighten it down and it's not moving anywhere. You know, uh, even then, it's pretty easy to, to take out and just snap in place. Again, you can tension that down as, as tight as you like. I think I'm maybe in the middle right now. Um, I also have a phase five uh, a replacement strap. This does not change or alter the actual brace in any way. It's just a replacement strap that has a design on it. And I got the digital gray camo. 
to break up some of this uh, these black accessories here. Uh, again, they don't make this in a gray, only a black and FDE. So I thought maybe this would you know give it a nice little uh, break, a uh, little splash of color at the end. All of my braces in some form uh, have, or all of my braces have uh, a different strap from phase five. Uh, this one has the flat dark earth uh, SBA4 uh, pistol brace with the phase five. This is the multi cam uh, replacement strap uh, to match all of the multi cam you know, accessories I have. This is a Troy. Uh, t padded T sling also in multi cam. My gloves are multi cam. My backpack's multi cam. I, I really like the multi cam motif. Um, I wish I think they do make a multi cam magazine. AR15 discounts does. I, I haven't had a chance to buy it yet. Usually goes out of stock. Uh, I think B5 or B5 or Bravo Company makes a actual stock for the rifle uh, in multi cam which uh, I have it's been out of stock for a while, but you know, to each his own. Uh, they make, uh, Phase 5 makes several different ones. My wife's AR pistol has a pink camo um, strap uh, for her. So if you're looking to maybe add a little splash of color, you know, uh, SB uh, Tactical sells that these straps on their websites. Uh, it comes in different colors. You just have to know your length and width. And they list all of that on the website, so... Overall, uh, for now, this is how I'm going to shoot it and run it for the next couple of hundred rounds. Uh, ammo is, uh, even though I have uh, quite a bit uh, I've amassed over the uh, the year here, uh, I am not going out and shooting, you know, uh, four or five, six hundred rounds at a time or breaking this into a thousand and then calling it, you know, reliable. Uh, I'm going to shoot roughly 200 rounds through it before I uh, make any more additions or modifications. But for right now... We're going to see how this is going to work. Uh, so far, I, I like it. it. The weight of it is great. Let me show you how it is next to a, a, a 11 and a half inch AR. So you can kind of compare uh, how you, let's say, if you were want to want this as your home defense gun, um, how it compares to having an AR pistol instead as far as, uh, you know, the, the size comparison so that you can, can see. Is this really right for you? Or is a Scorpion Evo uh, right for you or you'd rather go with the AR pistol? Again, this is 11 and a half inch AR pistol with a roughly two inch Call Valley linear compensator uh, with, you know, all the accompanying uh, furniture. Again, you, you deck it out the way you like. But really, this SBT Evo uh, brace for the Scorpion is not adjustable. It just it's folding. But you can kind of see where I like to position my SB uh, brace for my AR kind of halfway. I don't like it all the way out. It's a little long for me. Uh, I like it kind of in the middle. So uh, I didn't notice this until I put them next to each other. But if you were to put the end of the receivers right on top of each other, like so, it kind of matches almost perfectly the position I already like. So it, it, it worked out perfect for me. So if you're somebody who has a uh, uh, a rifle or a, car or a pistol set up with the, your brace or stock in the middle right there, this is right up your alley. This will fit your shoulder exactly how you would like it. So if we were to put it back here, uh, you can kind of see the difference. You've got a good, uh, I would say close to six inches. Again, 7.7 7 inch barrel versus 11 and a half with uh, you know, the, the company compensator. So... You know, it's a tough decision. If I wanted to run this as a home defense gun, is it really that more compact and mobile as a uh, compared to an 11 and a half inch AR? But running them as is with no suppressor, uh, they're pretty close to me. Honestly, I, I can use either one as a home defense gun. Um, I may turn this one into a home defense gun, may put a light on it later. Um, but we'll see. Uh, we're going to see how this thing shoots, but I'm expecting good things. Uh, this is not my home defense gun. This is just one of my ARs I wanted to compare. I've got, I've got a uh, eleven and a half inch, ten and a half, eight and a half. I'm uh, gonna pick up another ten and a half up upper uh, in the next uh, month or so. 
so I've got a few AR pistols and also I have a few AR rifles and my 14 and a half inch rifle is my home defense setup right now. I had to move the charging handle to the other side because of this, uh, but also uh, in relation to the charging handle and your sight, your red dot or uh, low power variable, whatever you want to put up here, just be aware, if you like to do the HK slap, you cannot put your sight all the way to the front here uh, because once this charging handle comes up, it's going to be right. If the sight was right here, it'll be right on the sight. You couldn't slap it. You would be hitting the uh, your optic. So by it being, you know, six spaces back, now I have room to actually do the HK slap. And, you know, that's always fun to do. But again, the HK slap only uh, only really works if you're putting in a fresh mag and charging it for the first time. If you were to reload, uh, the bolt would hold back. The charging handle wouldn't be up anyway. So. Uh, there's limited uses for that HK slap, but it's, again, it's just cool to do. And by putting the sight, the sight back here, I'm able to do that. So a lot of this stuff is experimentation. Things that I like, you may not like, but I wanted to make a video so that you guys can see uh, if you're in the same boat as me. Uh, you know, I'm coming from ARs. Uh, I want a PCC. Uh, I, I drilled it down to the Scorpion Evo, but I can't take. The, the the stock things that came with it, the problems that I've uh, run across and heard on YouTube and, and reading uh, forums and whatnot. Uh, I wanted to make the same changes. And uh, honestly, in, in this configuration right now, I'm very happy. Uh, once we shoot it, put some rounds through it, I may make some uh, minor you know adjustments. And uh, we'll check out some of the forums, see what other people are doing. Uh, but for the most part, it's good to go now. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you for our servicemen and service women. Thank you for the Constitution. Thank you for the Second Amendment, and God bless the USA.